is the Civ Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star today's show comes to us from Rick Motek, and it's their new Slim Box Button Box. Rick Motek has been a longtime supporter of our community, and this addition to their product lineup is a great consideration for anybody looking to add their sim rig out there. The Slim Button Box is made to be a low profile option for those looking for more controls while driving. The Slim Box goes for $129.50 and is one of the smallest and easiest options for sim racers and still gives drivers 21 mappable game functions. The slim boxes are being made to order and they are currently available at the Rick Motec website. So for $129.50, you get the slim box itself, you get the mounting screws, and you also get the pre-printed, 140 pre-printed racing term labels to give it that super pro look. So one of the main features of the Slim Box is its size and its simplicity. The Slim Box is absolutely what I would call a minimalistic design. It's slim, it's small, and it should make it very easy to accommodate into your rig or your sim racing chassis. Now the overall dimensions of the Slim Box are seven and a quarter inches or 284 millimeters wide, five and a half inches or 140 millimeters tall, and then a depth or thickness of only three quarters of an inch or 19 millimeters. The box itself is the typical plastic enclosure type with a face in that new faux carbon fiber look. The corners of the button box have nicely rounded and smooth corners. On the back side of the box is a USB plug-in point along with four little tiny holes in a 100 by 100 visa pattern. Spaced out nicely across that front faux carbon face are the buttons and encoders. There are a total of nine push buttons laid out in three rows of three. They are high quality plastic buttons in red and they have a good click when pressed in. The buttons measure in at nearly half an inch or 12 millimeters across their face. In addition to the buttons are three rotary encoders that can be turned either to the left or right. They have a rubberized texture to them and a white line showing their current position. The encoders are about a half an inch or 12 millimeters thick at the spot that you grab them with your fingers. These encoders also press in and actually have four function types that can be programmed to operate in different ways. As I mentioned, included with the Slim Box are those 140 pre-printed labels. They're on that metallic silver with a black printing and they are very nice and handy. Now it's your choice. You can use them or you can not use them. And I've done other things in the past like use sticky notes or even look for my P-Touch labeler and made custom label labels, but then I'm always trying to trim them, trying to get them just right. These labels being pre-printed, they have a uniform look. And if you spend the time to label everything correctly, it makes it very easy to identify each of your buttons. It also makes it so that it looks super pro, like I mentioned. I mean, you'll think of a real dashboard, a real race car, and they have every button or switch or dial labeled so that the driver never makes a mistake. So these labels are handy and you can use them or choose not to use them. It's totally up to you. Now the Slim Box came with four number eight screws that are ready to go for mounting depending on the thickness of what you're mounting them to or that Visa adapter. If you do need to go to longer screws, no matter what you do, make sure it doesn't go into the box more than five eighths of an inch or you're gonna do damage. So as long as you're number eight pitch. As long as you're within five eighths of an inch, you can use any screws to hold this thing on. Now, in my case, I found that the little thumb screws that we use for our computer cases actually looked really cool, fit my Visa mount and held it on in place really nicely. For me, I was gonna 3D print a Visa mount or adapter and I was just gonna simply bolt it to my wheel deck. And with it being so small, again, getting it somewhere on your rig is gonna be very easy. Some of the larger button boxes take a very, very substantial mount and they take a lot of space. So if you're like me and you're the guy with a steering wheel, two keyboards, two mice, two microphones, a stream deck, your pedals, everything all there in the rig, there's not a lot of extra space. But with the slim box design, I was able to fit it in really nicely. I just simply added a piece of 80-20 to my rig, found a generic piece of metal that I bolted to that, and then I bolted the Visa mount to that metal and then bolted the slim box to my mount. Four screws later, it was mounted in a great position and looking good on my rig. 
I cannot understate just how easy it was to mount this button box. I've mounted a lot of button boxes to my rig in various different methods and ways, and there is always a little bit of figuring out or a challenge. But with this one, with very little hardware added, four screws through a Visa adapter, and bam, it was on my rig, looking good, very easy. Plug in the USB cable, and we're ready to go. Now, before we start mapping our controls and getting underway, I want to talk about these encoders a little bit because these are really cool encoders on this. Not only do they turn left and right with 12 positions like most encoders, not only are they also a push button, but they also are a secondary encoder. When you push, you can actually turn the, the dial and get another 12 positions. So you got position A, let's call it buttons 13, 14, position B and buttons 15 and 16. Or it could be just that 13, 14 and button 15 being just pressing the button. And you can very simply program this, which is covered in the instructions for the box, but it's as simple as pressing buttons one, two, and three, and then pressing in the encoder that you wanna switch its modes. You can also reset the box just by holding down buttons seven, eight, and nine for three seconds. And this works out really good. Maybe you wanna use it for changing your views. So maybe one is seat forward and seat back, the other being seat up and seat down. Maybe you want it to be front and rear traction bars, all sorts of options in the way you use, you use those encoders. And it made it again, one of the coolest encoders, one of the coolest button boxes I've ever used. So after spending some time with the button box, getting all the buttons mapped exactly the way I wanted, I actually did use sticky notes just to test out each button in the way I wanted it. I then went to work with the pro labels from Rickmo Tech because I really do think it finishes it off or sets off the button box and again, gives it that pro look. I keep saying that, but that is one of the cool things about having the pre-printed labels, having them look consistent. Also, the spacing on the button box allows me to place those labels in a really good position. So it's clear what button I'm labeling, and it also gives enough room for those labels without having to trim them all like I have with P-Touch labels in the past. So with the encoders programmed the way I wanted to use them, with the buttons mapped in game the way I wanted to use them, and all my labels on the button box the way I wanted to use it in game, it was in fact time to start driving with the button box. So focusing our attention first on the nine button layout. The spacing was not only big enough for the labels, but it's also large enough for you to very precisely hit only the button you are reaching out for. The button types are the typical found on high-end button boxes with a medium level of pressure required to activate and a medium level click that can be felt and slightly heard. The encoders themselves have a good feel on my fingertips with that rubberized grip. Much like the buttons, the spacing is also nice. There's enough room for labels, enough space to prevent grabbing the wrong dial, and enough distance between the dials to even reach in with a gloved hand. When turning the encoders left and right, the pressure is very much on the light side. If turned aggressively, it will be very easy to skip over the detent and get more than one click. If you're just pressing the encoder in as a button, it has a lot more pressure than the red buttons at what I would describe a medium to high amount of click. You can feel it on your fingers as much as you can hear it with your ear. and it's enough pressure that it will rarely, if ever, happen by accident. In fact, of anything I will do with this box, it is that pressing of the encoders that will test my 3D mount with the pressure of the encoders causing it to flex the most. If using the encoders as a press-in secondary rotation, this pressure is great. It clearly defines whether you are pressing in or not when using that secondary dial. The downside is that with that extra tension of pressing in, the detents between positions can be a little harder to feel. However, despite that delicate turning, these encoders are super solid and feel like they can take this pressure for a very long time. In gloves, the spacing, the texture, and the pressure of the buttons worked out very well. In gloves, my fingers do not have quite the same dexterity. So on the encoders, I found them to be a little bit on the small side and the delicate rotary turning to be a little harder to sense with my fingertips. 
This was made easier by the spacing and being able to grab the dials even in gloves and not worry about turning or touching other buttons or dials on the box. The Slim Box performed very well out on track and with its 21 mappable functions, it really expanded the amount of controls at my fingertips compared to using just a standard steering wheel on its own. So I think that tells you everything you need to know about the Rickmotech Slim Box. I think it shows all the features, lets you know the price and how to install it, almost knocked it over there. But just to make it perfectly clear, let's break things down with the good, the not so good, and the bottom line, starting off with the good, and that being its compact design. Its simplistic layout. Good button pressure. Great for VR users. High quality buttons, encoders, and internal electronics. Dual mode encoders. Comes with labels. Easy to mount. And now on to the not so good. Starting off with, it is a little on the expensive side for what some would call a basic button box. Encoder light action for turning in particular. Could strip mounting holes. And that takes us to the bottom line, starting with getting back to the good and the not so good, which is there's really not a whole lot to say about most button box of a certain quality. Once you get into the high end button boxes, you're talking about premium prices, even on the low end. And I've seen button boxes reaching all the way up in the $400, dollars $500 range. Now, some would say, I could build this button box myself. I could DIY that box for $35. And you know what? Absolutely, you sure could. And the same is true for all those super duper high end button boxes as well. Now, what do you get when you pay for the high money compared to a button box? Well, you get button layouts that are absolutely perfect. When I've done my own DIYs, I'll tell you what, there's no way I'm gonna get nine buttons in a perfect row just like these are. You also get professional enclosures with rounded edges that you're not gonna knock with your knees and cause a bleeder. You also get extremely high-end buttons, encoders, and the electronics inside that are designed to work, plug and play, no ands, ifs, or buts about it, as well as the programmability. So there are a lot of aspects to a pro-made button box compared to a DIY, but I'm the last person on earth who's ever gonna argue against somebody who wants to take on their own project, build their own any equipment. I'm not just talking button boxes. You could be talking hand brakes, you could be talking pedal sets, you could be talking DIY motion kits. I'm a huge fan of DIY, but it's not for everybody. And when you're looking for something slim, when you're looking for something that's gonna fit on your rig in a really easy fashion, this is one of the best button boxes I've ever tested. Which really takes me to the other part or the other aspect that I kept talking about, the size and the simplicity. A lot of people do have a limited amount of space for their rigs and a giant button box just isn't the cards. I wanted something simple for my rig. I'm accommodating a lot of gear. I don't have a lot of space and I needed to keep the mount simple so that I could remove it from my rig when I need to. And all of those objectives were made. I just have to take a little bit of care with those little holes and not strip them out. Now, one other thing, when I talked about or considered VR, I ruled out button boxes because how hard it would be to locate the button box and find the proper button without spending too much time trying to align yourself to make sure you're pressing the right button while blind in VR. This button box kind of changed my mentality on that. The distancing, the simple layout made it very easy to just blindly reach out and know exactly where I was hitting. And I think even for a VR user that this nine button, three by three layout of buttons, three simple dials is simple enough to reach out and operate even while blind or in VR. So I hope that tells you everything that you need to know about the slim Slim Box by Rick Motech. It's one of my favorites ever. You can check it out at their website. They have a selection of different button boxes, but this is one of the latest, $129.50 and available now. So again, I hope I told you everything you need to know. If you want to see more reviews like this one, you be sure to subscribe to The Sim Pit here at YouTube. If you want to see my personal driving, check out Sim Pit Live on YouTube as well. That's where I do all my own driving, various different sims. You can see how I do out on track. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching. This is The Sim Pit. I'm Sean Cole. 
and I'll see you on the track.